Today, we have a special guest star. Ooh. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the final hiatus video between uh, our patient shoots. So it's the last time you're just gonna be seeing this on its own without having any procedures to show you. So today I am going to be introducing someone rather special. Um, as you guys know, I'm kind of getting a little bit too hectic now, like with my life and with people coming into the clinic and I just don't have enough of these to go around. So I have uh, already Dr. Kishan, who is an old friend of mine. He's a doctor and a dentist and very thrilled to have him in the clinic. So in addition to my gorgeous, gorgeous friend, Dr. Kishan, I have another doctor joining me who also happens to be a dentist as well. How lucky am I? I think we must literally be the only place ever to have three people in the same clinic who both have medicine and dental degrees. So, without further ado, introducing... Hey! Hello. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Well, nice to have you. <laughs> so, Dr Ewan McKinnon, this is your life. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, for a bit of a warm up, we'll get on to the meaty stuff in a minute. Let's do the doctor doctor jokes first, just to ease you in a bit. Bab. So, this is a bit of a tradition because I did this with uh, Dr. Kishan as well when he first came on the channel, just to sort of break the ice a little bit. So, I thought, let's go for it. So, I'm, I'll start and then we'll keep score. We'll do maybe three each. Oh, these are not great. Okay. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I feel like a carrot. Don't get yourself in a stew. Amazing. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> wait, which was I want? Okay. Doctor, doctor, my son has swallowed my pen. What should I do? I don't know. Use a pencil till I get there. Yeah. It's good advice, actually. Doctor, doctor. I feel like a pair of wigwams. The problem is, you've become too tense. Oh my god. <laughs> I think that's quite good actually. <laughs> He's quite smart. <laughs> doctor, doctor, how do I stop my nose from running? Don't know. Stick your foot out and trip it up. That's good. Mm. That's good. It's not. <laughs> uh, doctor, doctor, I've become invisible. I'm afraid I can't see you now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, doctor, will this ointment clear up my spots? I never make rash promises. Oh. Mm. Mm. Good. Skin related, yes, at least. <laughs> yes, yes, topical. Yeah, topicals are good. In more ways than one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, last one, because I, I think this one's quite good. Uh, okay, and you, you get to do a last one as well, but doctor, doctor, I've become a kleptomaniac. Have you taken anything for it? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> right. We need do a good one to end just on. Just do your best. There are no bests. They're all terrible. Oh my god, this is so this is so bad, this one. <laughs> right, doctor, doctor, I keep thinking I'm a dog. We'll sit on the couch and we'll talk about it. But I'm not allowed on the couch. Mmm. My god. That is good. No. This one actually genuinely made me laugh when I did it with Kish. Um, doctor, doctor, I have a little bit of lettuce sticking out of my bottom. Oh dear, I'm afraid to say, to me, it just looks like the tip of the iceberg. Oh my <laughs> god, that is so bad. That is actually so bad. <laughs> oh, we ended on a high there that at least. That good. So, go for it, tell us. Tell us what you've done in the past. Because I know, you, like me, you've done both medicine and dentistry mm -hmm. and you picked up a BSc? An MSc. MSc. Ooh. Oh, fancier. Ooh. <laughs> yes. What was that? Uh, primary dental care. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. What, like, tell us about that. What is that? 
So it was like a research-based degree for three years and my research thesis was in oral surgery because that was my interest at the time. So yeah, I guess just a lot of hard work for three years, but you know all about that. You've done what mm. one as well and now you're in your second one as well. Yeah, I did mine in, it was uh, clinical and experimental medicine. So it's like how to design drug trials. Um, but I did mine over the course of a year. So I'm presuming that you did yours alongside. Alongside work, yeah. I... That must have been tough. It was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive. So where did you do that? What was your institution? Uh, University of Kent for my master's. Okay. What about you? Uh, I went to UCL. Okay. UCL, yeah, nice. which is cool. And I'm uh, at the minute at George Washington doing my um, integrative medicine master's, which is slow, deliberate, painful work, you know, <laughs> but I guess it is what it is. Um, and so what was it that drove you to do both degrees in the first place? Well, I think like most people who do dentistry first, they get involved with a career in maxillofacial surgery. I think you are probably the same as me and facial aesthetics sits really nicely alongside maxillofacial surgery. So, and to do maxillofacial surgery, you have to do both degrees. Mm. So they kind of just came together and then that's going to be my path for the last few years. Mm. Mm. So if you couldn't do this, what would you do instead? Ooh, if I couldn't do any dentistry or medicine? Yeah. That's so tough. It's all I've known since I was like yeah. 16, I 17. Know. I struggle with that question as well. I don't know what I, I would know. do. I'm trying to have a think. In, an, like in your wildest fantasies. I mean, a top of my list is a billionaire. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, unemployed, <laughs> um, kept man yeah. would be pretty good. <laughs> mm. uh, what else would I do? I guess something more creative. Mm. Yeah. Medicine is a little bit rigid sometimes. I think that's why aesthetics is so nice because you get to be a little bit more creative. So something yeah. along the creative route. Yeah, I think I'd probably do the same thing as well. Mm. Actually, that's why I like making the videos because it gives a bit of creativity and a bit of an outlet yeah. that you don't really get in the day-to-day -day, the grind um so in terms of like your aesthetic procedures and so on do you have like a favorite procedure that you like to perform i do i do so my favorite procedure is jawline mm -hmm. and teaming it being greedy but teaming it with a nice <laughs> cheek as well that is being a bit that is being a bit greedy, yeah. but when you see someone in profile and they've got that nice cheek and jawline flowing together, that's my favourite. Mm. What about you? I like doing the weird stuff now, like um, A-frame. Oh yeah, A-frame um, looks so good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, it does. It's something that not a lot of people think about as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's up there for me. And I... I'm now, I think, getting quite into uh, lateral under eye yeah. as well. I'm loving that too. Um, if you guys watch the channel, um, you will have seen a few videos ago, I spoke a bit about like facial proportion. And in there, um, I spoke about a um, machine learning thing that looks at the side of your eye here and it can judge how old you are. Um, to I think 2.3 years just looking at wow. the side of your eye so it's got parameters in there like um, the tilt of the lateral part of your eye the color of the skin and how many lines and wrinkles you have there as well mm. which I think is really cool just from that one thing this is gonna be the new temple then I we've think neglected so neglected temples for years and now we're, what, we're neglecting lateral yes. eye yes yes the lateral eye is the new temple mm. so what what's the new jawline then oh, I don't know. <laughs> How many more bits of the face can we really treat? <laughs> We're getting down to the eyelids now, We're running out of things to treat. That's true. So do you have any sort of favorites when it comes to what products you like to use? Because I'm a big user of Juvederm and use a bit of Tearsal as well. Well, I've tried them all. Mm. I like the Juvederm range a lot. It's very reliable, as you know, and I like the safety of it because it's so you know widely used all over the world. Trying to think, I like the TSL brand. I like their RHA range for the mid face. I think it's really nice. And Radius mm -hmm. for the jawline. Oh, we should probably say um, in America, they don't have the same sort of fillers 
the old no. range of fillers that we have over here, but I do think they've got RHA now. But, yeah, they have. But think, they yeah. don't have the rest of the TSL range, is that right? So I don't I think, think they've got... I think it's RHA they've got, yeah. Right. And they have Radius, obviously, and they have the Juvederm range, but slightly smaller than ours, I think. Yeah. So they definitely don't have the new Volux, mm -hmm. which is coming soon. Excited. Um, so out of all of those, if you could only do one, one filler. <laughs> yeah, for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Voluma. Oh, really? Voluma. Yeah. Mm. I haven't used Volux yet, though, because yeah. it's coming out, but Voluma. Because you get the biggest bang for your buck with Voluma, don't you? You yeah. can treat so many areas with it. That's true. And it's so structural. I guess you could always dilute it as well if you needed to. You could mix it with a bit of saline. Yeah. I wouldn't like to, but we could try. A bit of off-labeling, exactly. you could do that. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Give, it, give it a go. So what's your take on things like threads? So threads, I like to use them in the correct circumstances because I think for a while they are being used inappropriately. Mm. I don't know what your thoughts were on that, but totally I think agree. they're really good in combination with other treatments. So ideally fillers, but even skin resurfacing treatments, but we want to stimulate collagen with the threads. And then people for years were kind of, I think, saying that they're going to get you know, facelift quality with non-surgical mm. facelift. And with systems like Silhouette, yes, you were getting a lot of lift to begin with, but then the threads would dissolve and then you'd lose that lift and people were disappointed. So you really need to use them in combination with other treatments if you're going to get that lifting property. But I do like using them, mm -hmm. mainly monofilaments to oh, build really? collagen. Interesting. Mm. Okay, so you heard it here first, guys. Uh, I don't find it fun, so see Dr. McKinnon. Who also you... doesn't find it fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see him for your threads. I don't mind, I'll <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting actually, because I don't really use that much monofilament anymore. But when I do do it, I am always surprised when I'm reminded how good it is, which is weird. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know why I go through that process every time when the patient comes back I'm like oh yeah that's decent actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you've used them correctly yeah which for years I think they've not been so mm. let's use them properly and we'll get nice results mm. with regards to <laughs> PDO versus mm. silhouette mm -hmm. do you have a preference when it comes to using the cogged or the barbed with PDO or, or you're a silhouette man I would use the PDO mm. with the cogs and barbs because silhouette is I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. You do get nice results with Silhouette. They last a lot longer than the PDO. And that can be a concern and a good thing because you're going to maintain that lift for longer than you might with PDO. But if there's any problems or complications, then it's very difficult to get rid of a Silhouette. Um, and I think yeah. that if you correctly use PDO, then you'll get an equally as good result as Silhouette. Mm. But the jury's still out. And Silhouette need to do some more training with me because mm. they've changed their treatment structure recently. They so. do that all the time, I find, exactly. Silhouette. So you get promised yeah. one thing with it and then they change it and it's just hard. So mm. maybe if they come in and convince us one day. Mm. <laughs> so now that I've introduced Dr. Ewan to you guys, we are going to play one more game before we finish, which is Guess That Gauge. Woo! <laughs> So I have a bunch of needles here and I just thought it would be really fun to see whether or not he guesses the gauge correctly or not. Guess that gauge, round one. So Ewan doesn't know what gauge I'm going to be selecting here. What's that? This looks like a Juvederm needle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Looks like a 27 gauge. Yes! 27 gauge! <laughs> Round two. Guess that gauge. Pressure's on now. What's that? Oh, try not to stab myself. Okay, so this is a super tiny needle. And I recognise this one as the Volite needle. That's correct. So the Volite is the skin booster from the Juvederm range. So you put tiny, tiny little bits of this miniature needle just beneath the skin and it hydrates and boosts the skin quality. So it's a good one. Well done. He guessed that gauge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Round three, guess that gauge. Okay, just stick out your hand. I'm just going to stab you with it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what? Things I do for a job. <laughs> What's this? This is a big old needle. This is the kind of needle, it's not too big, obviously, but it's the kind of needle you use before you put a cannula in. Correct. Which are nice. And it's a 20. Three. Yes. Let's see, this man knows his needles. Mm -hmm. Okay, you win. And what do I win? The trophy. Honoured. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed my entertaining dinner guest um, who will be back over the next few weeks actually treating some patients. So I will see you guys then. See you later. See ya.